One of the most important things in realistic CG scenes is light. This is not a DP course, unfortunately or luckily. We won't talk about light basics. I would like to talk about HDRI maps and how to create them. For those of you who might not know, HDRI maps are high dynamic range spherical maps that can recreate realistic lighting in your CG scene. It's quick and effective way to light your scene. In my workflow, I usually drop a HDRI map first and then if I need to, I add additional lights to enhance the atmosphere. Before we go further, let's discuss the importance of the quality of HDRI map. For that, let's compare chip dish and high quality HDRI map. 8-bit JPEG or high-end HDRI map from a dedicated website. For this particular uh, comparison, I converted high quality map into low dynamic range 8-bit JPEG. To describe what I mean, it's enough to decrease the exposure of both images. 8-bit image uh, gets gray in highlight areas. That's because it doesn't have enough info in highlights and shadows. It's low dynamic range. High quality HDRI map, on the other hand, looks like someone is actually controlling the intensity of light and it's getting darker properly. That's what I want to teach you, how to create high quality ones and how to capture all that dynamic range. Using HDRI maps in your 3D scenes can seriously increase the quality of your work because you will use realistic environment to generate reflections and lights and it always enhances the realism. For instance, if I'm working on VFX or CG combined with uh, live shots, I will definitely make sure I'll capture several HDRI maps from location because I want to integrate 3D elements as good as I can. Before we start making HDRI map, let's discuss what you will need. Obviously, you will need a camera wide lens, uh, wider is better. In this particular case, I'm using 16 millimeters on a7R2, which is full frame, so no crop fa factor. Also, pano head is um, preferable, but still optional. You can get away without it. The reason you want to consider pano head is, let me show you, pano head allows camera and lens to remain in same spot. So you're basically just rotating a uh, point of view if that makes sense. That way you don't have a parallax effect and the stitching software won't struggle while post-producing your photos. To capture something, let's go outside. The best environment for HDRI maps is outside. I chose that room because it's Pretty unusual. I like it here. All you have to do to get a 360 spherical map is shoot every, let's say, 30 degree on one axis and then rotate your camera in another direction and rotate the camera 360 again. That way you will get a 360 view of the area. Important notes before you shoot. Remember our chip dish to high-end HDRI map comparison. To make a high-end one, one picture per angle is not enough. You need to capture each angle with different exposures in order to get all that dynamic range into your HDRI. It's called bracketing. It's the way of shooting when your camera is uh, setting your exposure for you. So imagine you, I'll just show. I usually set half of a stop and five images. It means that my camera will capture five photos starting from underexposed version and ending with overexposed version. And that way in post we will be able to grab all that dynamic range into one image which is really cool and useful for our CG scenes. 
if you have a different camera from Sony, just Google how it's done in your camera. Before we proceed, make sure everything is set to manual in your camera. Focus, shutter speed, all that stuff. All set now, let's do it. That was quick, wasn't it? So now we need to stitch all the photos together to get that HDRI plus set up some settings to get all those exposures in. To start stitching, let's jump back to my hideout. <laughs> Okie dokie, let's drop off all the photos that we took. When all the photos are offloaded, you might want to do a basic correction in temperature, colors, all that usual stuff. I recommend to get rid of chromatic aberrations because uh, it confuses the software. As for lens distortion, I would leave it untouched because the software we will use applies the lens profile itself, so it kind of corrects everything itself. After you've finished, export all your photos as TIFF files. TIFF is one of the most high quality formats. It will contain all necessary data, all that dynamic range, plus EXIF data, which will tell the software what lens and camera we used. TIFF is also much more friendlier to other softwares than cameras native RAW. Let's talk about software. I believe there are a few out there, but I'm using the most popular one. The thing is called PTGUI. Have no idea how to pronounce that. PTGUI? PTGUI. PTGUI. Whatever. The only downside of using this software is that it's obviously paid. There are personal licenses available and pro licenses available. The difference between personal and pro is quite significant, I would say, both in price and in performance. I will use pro version because we were shooting bracketing and I need to get all that dynamic range in that HDRI map. Only pro version can do that. So you have to consider this little fact. Let's open that PTGUI thing and load all photos in. In a first window, when all the photos are loaded, you already see that kind of groups of photos. So exposure goes from underexposed to overexposed. Once everything is properly loaded on your right, you have that advanced button. You can click it and reveal more settings. There you can see exposure HDR tab where you can specify what you were shooting and how and what you want to get. In lens settings tab you already see that software knows what camera was used and what lens was used. That's thanks to EXIF data that was saved in our TIFF sequence. All right everything is fine. Let's click that align images button. The software also knows that you were shooting in bracketing mode. So it knows that we shot 37 photos with 5 exposures each. We want to enable HDR mode and link all bracketed exposures. And in the bottom of this window we want to select true HDR. Because exposure fusion is when the software will choose the best exposure from each image. And this is not what we want. We want dynamic range in our HDRI map. Click OK. The process of analyzing images might take a while. All done. And you see the software is kind of building and aligning all photos in spherical projection. Looks all right, but I already see several mistakes. I must confess, guys, it was pretty dumb dumb to go on that roof and shoot there just because too many bricks are there. For this tutorial, I should have chosen the simpler environment. This HDRI map might look good, but there are too much uh, manual work involved. So I won't bother too much. I just want to show you the process of creation of HDRI map. Anyways, the imperfections in our HDRI map are minimal and let's export the high-res version. In export settings you can specify the dim dimension of your HDRI map. Low dynamic range file format is usually used for preview purposes, so that's your JPEG. 
and the HDR file format as your final HDR file. Blah, 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 all looks good. Click create panorama. The process takes a while as usual. Yeah, see those blurred uh, areas? That's where software was confused and couldn't figure out the points. Much better job on this wall. Okay, let's jump into Cinema 4D and I will show you the benefit of using HDRI map. Click objects, HDRI environment and in environment tag, load your newly created HDRI map. Click render. Ta -da! This was my point of view on that roof. The cool part is that I can look around as if I would in real life. I love it so much. And yeah, I have exact the same light as I had in real life. I can now start putting objects in the, this environment. See, the, the, the shadows are casted like if it would be uh, in that particular environment that we were in. If I'll start put uh, reflective uh, materials on top of our geometry, you see that geometry reflects real environment. Usually in most of the cases you use depth of field and stuff like that so your background HDRI, HDRI map got blurred and you won't notice those imperfections that we had. But I just wanted to show you the process of creation that map and explain the importance of creating your own maps from your locations. I'm pretty happy with the result. I encourage you to go and test different settings, different uh, shooting methods. For instance, you can shoot one exposure, different nine photos, go crazy and get extreme dynamic range into your HDRI map. Also, open spaces work better than the tight environment that we were in. Obviously, golden hours works good, night scenes works Superb. And yeah, that was the goal of this little tutorial. I wanted to encourage you to start using HDRI maps in your work. I'm like repeated it 10 times now. I think I mentioned everything I wanted. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask in comments. I aim to answer when I can. As usual, if you found the video helpful, thumbs up. If CG and VFX is something you're into, subscribe to my channel, cause why not? Thanks for watching. Peace. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs>